People ask, who's Joe Hughes and what's 4BP? Well, Joe Hughes is a boy that grew up in the northeast pastoral country of South Australia, which is edging up towards the centre of Australia. It was a seven inch rainfall country, which was uh, regarded as semi uh, desert. Beautiful country. Um, it's all, all bush country with good uh, alluvial soils. And we grew up, well, I grew up in, in a horse world. We still uh, mustered all the cattle with horses and um, my father had motorbike, had a motorbike, and I think my brother, older brother may have had one. I was introduced to a motorbike when I was about 11. And um, in those days, they only made motorbikes in one size. They came in different widths, but they seemed to only come in one height. And until your legs were long enough to reach, that's all you got. But by the time I was 12, uh, I had trained my own three horses for the camp and uh, they were three white Appaloosas and I think I probably trained those in about a week to ten days. So my uh, background in horse training is quite extensive and when I left school at 16 I travelled a lot of the uh, stations that still were using horses and then they ventured away from horses into helicopters and now most of the inland's gone back to horses again. The method that I use now uh, is comes from a, a chap that uh, was um, a, a very highly regarded horse trainer in our area where I grew up and uh, Bevan Roberts is his name. I hope you don't mind me using that, Bevan. <laughs> and uh, we held a, a horse training um, school for an educational uh, group here in Australia that is called TAFE. And we did that for 17 years on the station I grew up on. And once a year, we would have um, a number of students come in uh, initially they were all station men and uh, ringers, cowboys from all over the countryside and uh, as time went by we started to take in more fringe dwellers from the city, um, people that are interested in horses. Always with the emphasis on uh, station horses and station workers. And this Bevan one day told me about a chap that Trained a horse with about a nine inch stick, just a little 19, 20 mil stick. And he said he trained this horse, not Bevan, but this chap that he told me about, about pressure and release with the stick to make this horse do everything it had to do. No roping of it. Um, uh, everything was taught with a stick. And it intrigued me. So between then and the next year when he came back, and I think I was around 15 or 16 at this stage, I uh, caught myself a, a, a little chestnut brumby, and I called him Reg. And I trained that horse with this little stick. So when he came back the next year, I portrayed, I ran out this little horse that you could full gallop across the paddock, bareback with a stick. And when you wanted to stop, you rested that on his head and he'd hit the brakes and shoot in reverse. If you wanted to go one way or the other, you would use this stick. Um, and that was the beginning of 4BP. Because from that point on, I thought, why do I need a stick? Throw the stick away. I'll train with what I'm standing here with. And this is where it all came about. So for many years, I travelled as a... a a station property uh, employee and um, going over lots of horses and different stations and sometimes you go to a station you have to train your own horses that you ride etc and anybody that had a little bit of training um, prowess about them they would get the job of training a few horses while they were there so then uh, I had a very nasty accident and um, 
I bruised all the left side of my brain and uh, crushed my chest and collapsed this lung and bruised both lungs and blew the back of my hip out. I snapped my back, I split the vertebrae uh, length for length. Uh, I lost about 15% uh, of one of the vertebrae and I'm now a bit over one inch shorter than I used to be. But I survived. I broke both my hands too. Um, while I was laying there in hospital for a very long time, staring at the ceiling, wondering if I'll walk, I made a vow to myself that when I got out of bed and returned to the station, I would continue to perfect my horse training technique and I would pass that on to my four young children, which I think was somewhere around the age of uh, four or five years uh, to nine or ten years old. And that's what I did. Uh, we had a few horses around, but we bought more horses in and um, we turned our tennis court into the training field. And not that we played tennis there anyway, it was just an earth floor tennis court. And in my steel frame, um, I'd come out in short spells from the house and we would train these horses. And uh, my horse was, uh, I think, about 15, a, a fair dinkum, 15 hands high, a big horse. And of course, the smallest child was about this big. But they trained him, and, um, and they trained many more since. And now I have my youngest son at 15, and, um, and my uh, eldest horse person at 17 and a 16 in the middle. So there's three of my children that are interested in horses, training wild stallions, which are all out here to the side of me, every day of the week, themselves. Stallions that 98%, 99% of the horse world here in Australia would not even enter the yard with. This is how safe our programs turned out to be. So, we progress on, I injure myself, I struggle with the stations. Uh, we have 200,000 acres of country nearly. Uh, my health continues to fail physically because of my uh, injuries. And we had a rather large drought, the drought broke. And of course, when all drought breaks, there was ample feed, ample water. And the government had started a cull program in New South Wales and Victoria to remove the uh, wild mustangs and brumbies from a place called Mount Kosciuszko National Park. It's a World Heritage listed park. I've got no qualms on them taking the horses out of there. Um, it's a very endangered um, flora and fauna and we don't have a great deal of high country here in Australia, and that is our high country. Um, my only concern is not to waste the animals. So we've taken it upon ourselves to take in every available horse that comes out of that mountain. There's 5,000 horses to come out. And um, we've taken it upon ourselves to set up a training system, uh, large training yards here, we feed and house and cart all the horses, everything we do ourselves. And um, just to, to save the lives of these horses and educate them so that so they become a life companion for somebody somewhere. And we could have um, virtually anybody, and I mean anybody with any background, come here and we can teach them how to train a horse themselves even if the best they've ever owned is a goldfish or a cat or a budgie or never even any of that, we can still teach them. So I suppose now we're at a position where we're utilising or attempting to utilise these Brumbies in community services, uh, PTSD, not just only for return servicemen, but virtually for anything else. Um, we have a major Indigenous leadership uh, course starting next year, uh, which I don't want to say much more about at the moment, but it is 
absolutely massive. And um, we do free training. We do, um, uh, we, we've got a, a, what we call a Kui traineeship uh, underway where we're going to take on 100 trainers and we're going to teach those 100 trainers how to train horses so that they too can become involved in receiving horses out of the mountains. Whether we have to train 100 trainers every year for the next five years, then that's what we'll do. So we've tried to utilise the uh, horse, the natural resource of the horse. There's only crime at the moment is he was born in the wrong spot. Beautiful horses, the the, the wild horses, whether you live in America or Argentina or Canada or wherever you have a wild horse, if a wild horse has a foot problem, it dies. If it has a knee problem, it dies. If it has a sore tooth problem, it dies. Anything goes wrong with that horse, it dies. So only the strongest of the strongest, the healthiest of the healthiest survive. And what we are getting out of the mountains is unbelievably fantastic it just makes you weak at the knees sometimes seeing how beautiful some of these horses are coming off and their intelligence is unfathomable so where are we going to go from here uh, only uh, time will tell but that's the background of joe hughes